Hello, in this demo I will explain you how we can implement a remote shell which is going to accept connections via TCP and um, it will uh, execute commands which are sent by those uh, remote clients. So just uh, a brief uh, overview of how we can, we can achieve that in Java for instance. The idea is that um, I chose not to walk through implementing the code with you, but to explain you the code, which is easier for me to do so, because it takes less, less time. So, as you may see here, I'm running um, a virtual machine, which is uh, uh, running Linux Mint, that's on my Mac. And um, I have created a small project, which is a, which is a console application. So the main program is just creating a component that's going to be my server. And I just start listening on a port and I'm waiting to receive admin commands. And there is only one command, which is exiting the program. So when the server start, what I do? This actually um, it's implementing auto closable, so I can use this in a try res with resource statement. And I have a method to start the server, a complementary method to stop it, and an alias which is actually um, the method defining auto closable interface, and it is called close. So my server is going to listening for incoming connections with the server socket and it will use a thread pool uh, implemented by an executor service to actually um, accept multiple connections. So that's going to be a concurrent server. What I do when I start the server, first I stop it and when I stop the server, this is because I can restart the server for instance to listen on a different port. So what I do when I stop the server, if I have the executor service created, then I shut down the service. That's going to stop all the running threads. And in the end, if the socket is not null, then I will close the socket. So after stopping the server, sorry for scrolling that, I create the server socket to listen on this port. And I also create a fixed thread pool uh, with the number of threads which depends on the number of uh, available cores of the processor and uh, usually it is wise to uh, start up between 20 and 50 um, threads per processor core. Then I submit a task to that executor service and what I need to do is to listen for incoming connections. So my server socket will accept uh, TCP channels and as long as this was, is not closed, I try to accept uh, a connection from the client and then I create a buffer reader and a print writer to be able to read line by line the message from that connection and also to write the output uh, to that connection. And then I just enter a command, um, I, I just enter some text on uh, the newly accepted connection and I flush the stream so that now the text will be sent to the connection. Then I need to monitor that connection and each time I receive a line that's going to be a command I will have to execute. Then I need to uh, execute that command and send back the output lines. So, in order for my server to be concurrent, uh, I need to submit a task to the executor service so that my main task will keep waiting for incoming connections while uh, some background tasks are going to actually perform uh, the listening on that uh, connection that's accepted. So, what I do uh, when accepting uh, a connection when listening for incoming commands, as long as the socket to that remote connection is not closed, 
I then try to read a line with the reader from the stream and if the user entered the exit command then I just close the socket so the server is going to close the socket to the client otherwise uh, I have no other internal commands implemented but I created a component that's going to execute the command and it's going to return all the lines that are outputted by executing that command. So I write to the remote connection um, the line and then in the end I flush the stream. What this method is going to do? Um, I have created an utility class with only one static method so I don't have to actually create the shell but rather I call each time the execute method. So suppose that I like to support also pipes. I will receive a line that's going to be a pipe. And my command may contain several commands which are linked together in a pipe. So I should return a list of strings that's going to be the output of the last command in the pipe. How do I do that? First of all, I split the pipe by the pipe delimiter and because this is using regular expression and this means or in regular expressions I need to escape it and because I'm in a string I have to escape, escape the escape as well. Now I take each command in the pipe and I like to execute the command. I suppose all the commands are gonna be external commands so except for the exit command which I handled in, uh, in the listener itself and not in the shell, all of these are going, are going to be executed from the disk as external process, uh, as external programs. So um, I have the support in Java to start a, pro a process by running a command and this should take the arguments split it by uh, an arbitrary number of spaces. So then I take the command, I trim it because the user might uh, um, use some formatter to enter some spaces between the commands in the pipe. So then I split by at least one space and that's going to be uh, the arguments by which I will create the builder with which I'm going to start the process. So I start the process and if I have the lines outputted by the previous command and this is the second or the next command in the pipe then I just create a writer which is going to output to the stream which is the input of the process uh, don't get fooled by the name it is an output stream because I write to that stream but actually this is the stream that the, the process is going to take the input from so I take each line from the previous command, I write it to the current process that's going to be started and then I flush the stream in the end. Then I need to create a reader just to collect the output of the current process. I take the input stream, don't get fooled by that, it is the output stream of the process, but for me it's an input stream because I read from that stream. So I take the input stream and then I create a thread to run this reader because I need to collect the lines in parallel while the process gets executed. I start the thread, I call the join method on the thread, thread to wait for the thread to stop. So I'm waiting to collect all the output lines from the thread and I also wait for the process to finish. Normally I should set uh, the exit uh, status for the last executed process but I'm not going to support any variables so there is no way you can take this as an input. Now my reader already collected the lines and I take the lines and the, that's going to be what I should use either for the response if it's the last command in the pipe or to be passed to the next command in the pipe. So how do I collect with my reader the lines? So the lines, the reader is created uh, on top of uh, the uh, output, output stream of the process 
which is going to be an input stream for me to read from. I create an input stream reader for, on top of the stream, and then I create a buffer reader just to be able to read line by line. When the thread will execute this class, it will execute the run method. I then create uh, an array for the lines, and I will try to read line by line. If I got to the end, then I will break the infinite loop, but otherwise I will add uh, the line that's ha that has been read to the list of lines. In the end, in the end I will return those lines. So, uh, with this, let me just uh, um, run my program, and I will just run this uh, as a, a Java application. And as you may see, it says that uh, it's running and uh, I should enter exit just to, to close it. Let me just try and see what is the, the IP of my station. And um, um, if I, I go in here, you see that um, this is actually... Um, I can connect to, uh, to my station using, um, normally I should use this IP, the one you see here, Let me just copy this, and um, I'll then connect with a remote terminal to that IP. So what you see here, it's the terminal in, uh, in my Mac, which is the host, and I'll try to connect on port 8080 to the um, the guest system. So I'll use telnet and try to connect on this IP and uh, on the port 8080. Okay. So as you may see here, it says uh, enter a command or just exit to close. This was the text that we output here when we accept a connection. First thing that we do, we say enter command or exit to close. Now let's just go back to my terminal and do as they say. So if I run uh, the Unix name command with the argument, the option A, which is for all, stands for give me all the, the details that you know. Of course, this is um, an uh, Ubuntu, which is uh, actually a Linux, Linux Mint. So if I then start another terminal here and I run locally the same command, you may see that this is my Darwin, which is macOS. So um, the output of this window is actually coming from the virtual machine. If I do a process state with uh, uh, displaying the processes for all users and even though without the terminal, and I do a grab and search for processes run in Java, then I see a bunch of um, processes which are running Java. But if I do a, a process state and take all the, the processes and then do a head, uh, let's say minus with the first two lines, then I also uh, see the, the header of the table which is outputting the processes and then the first line. So the idea is that we were able to execute commands remotely and we also support pipes. We have no support for defining variables nor the ability to get the status returned by the last process that we executed, but still we can add them and um, uh, we will have some functionality of a remote shell without any uh, in encryption of the channel, but still with the ability to send commands remotely to be executed by the server and then take back the output. So if I then enter exit, the connection has been closed by the server. And um, if I also go here and type exit, then the whole server will go down. So that's all. Thanks for watching.